Okay, so the all new Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 FE. These are my first impressions. Let's go ahead and jump in. First things first, the unboxing. I typically don't like to dwell on the unboxing, so let's go ahead and just fly through really quick. The device that you see here will come in this box right here. It looks just like the boxes that we've had with the previous tablets. Samsung Galaxy Tab S9, Samsung Galaxy Tab S8. Pretty much the same size. And I will, by the way, get to make battle videos against those tablets to share with you what my take is and make my recommendation based off that. But anyway, so going back to the box here, what you get will be the tablet at the top of the box and right below that you would have the Samsung S Pen, which by the way, this is going to be your standard Samsung S Pen. So the same one that we saw with the previous generation of the FE model here. The next thing we will see here is going to be the USB Type-C cable. This is what you're going to be using to charge your tablet and also transfer data. And of course, this box does not include a wall adapter. The next thing we will take a look at here will be the pin ejector. This is going to be for the micro SD card slot. In case you want to go ahead and expand that internal storage, you can use this to pop that tray out and be able to put in your micro SD card. And of course, we do have the quick start guide and that is pretty much it. So as I mentioned, there's really not that much when it comes down to the unboxing. So let's go back to the tablet itself here and talk about just the build quality. I like this brush finish that we have here. This is one thing, well, this is something that we've seen with previous tablets, including even the flagship ones. This is the regular Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 here. So kind of a brushed finish here. It feels good. It gives the tablet some level of premium feel to it. But when you compare them side by side with the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 here, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 just feels a tiny bit more premium than the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 FE here. But anyway, so let's go ahead and quickly fly over the physical features of what we have here. We have some new stuff here. By the way, please make sure to hit both the like and the subscribe there. I truly appreciate that. But anyway, so starting off with the power button there, which by the way, also combos as a fingerprint scanner. So you do have the fingerprint scanner embedded in that power button. Right below that, you have the volume rocker. This setup here kind of reminds me of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 or even the S8. Yes, it still had the fingerprint scanner, I believe. So it sits flush right there. And of course, physical fingerprint scanners are my personal favorite simply because they're more secure and they're faster than, you know, optical fingerprint scanner. So Samsung went ahead and skipped that and went directly to the physical fingerprint scanner. Then you have some mics there, two mics to pick up sound. You have a USB type C port at the bottom. Then we have, of course, a dual setup for the speakers. This is what we've seen with the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 FE tuned by AKG. The sound quality coming out of this is actually very clean. Although I wish it could be louder though, but it's a nice crisp sound coming out of that. At the bottom, of course, you have the pogo pins for the keyboard cover at the top there you do have an additional mic and you have the micro sd card slot which of course means that this tablet does have space or does have internal storage that is expandable at up to one terabyte by the way when it comes down to the config the regular samsung galaxy tab s9 fe here will start with six gigs of ram for the base 128 gigs of internal storage but if you were to go for the 256 gigs of internal storage that would then afford you eight gigs of RAM. Now, to those of you who are currently considering picking up the larger one, because remember, you get two models, right? The Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 FE and the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 FE Plus. If you've been following the channel for a while, then you probably knew that already because I've made a bunch of videos on this. But anyway, so if you were to go for the FE Plus, then you get your choice of eight gigs of RAM for the base 128 gigs of internal storage or 12 gigs of RAM for the 256 gigs of internal storage. So it seems like whether you go for the FE or the FE Plus, you're better off going for the 256 gigs of internal storage so you could get more of that RAM. Of course, assuming, you know, it fits within your budget. Also, when it comes down to the color, you get the mint, you get lavender, you get gray and the silver. I went with the mint that you see here. I've don't think I've ever owned a mint tablet from Samsung. I typically go for the gray or darker ones, but either way, in this case here, I went for the mint and it looks pretty neat. Also, make sure to use the links in the description so that you could go ahead and check out the current deals on the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 FE and the S9 FE Plus. Currently, Samsung is running some deals. Use my affiliate links there so that you could go ahead and take advantage of those discounted price right now. You don't have to buy right now, but at least check it out so that you have in mind what they have available on the website website using my special links. Now, still sticking with the physical features on the back here, what you have is an eight megapixel camera there along with a mic right below there. It may look a little bit like what we have on Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 here, but this is a 13 megapixel along with a flash, right? Here you have an eight megapixel along with a mic. On the front here, you have a 12 megapixel camera. So a better camera on the front, you'd be wondering 
why but it actually makes sense because typically when you have a tablet you would tend to use your front facing camera for calls video calls and things like that and the camera on the back would be for scanning documents and things like that so you don't necessarily need for it to be that amazing but either way picture quality will be what you would be expecting in fact picture quality here is comparable to what i get from the samsung galaxy tab s7 fe now let's go ahead and move on to the front focusing on the display here the size is 10.9 inches unlike the 11 inches that you have here with the samsung galaxy tab s9 this is not even a comparison video i don't know why i keep comparing the two so i'm just going to put this down and focus on this you get a 10.9 inches display here this is an lcd display unlike the dynamic amoled display that you have on the samsung galaxy tab s9 and i can already tell you that the picture quality here is actually pretty nice but when you compare with the samsung galaxy tab s9 obviously you will be able to tell the difference right because one is a super or dynamic amoled display whereas another one is just an lcd but anyway so picture quality here is already nice and if you know something about samsung that you know that they make pretty good displays plays here. The resolution is 1440 by 2304, I believe. The PPI here is 249, right? So fairly dense, right? Fairly pixel dense when it comes down to a display here. To those of you who don't care about the specs, just know that the display here looks nice. It's also coming with something new this time around, a higher refresh rate, or the option for high refresh rate, meaning it's gonna be smoother. Well, it's super smooth when you scroll. You can go up to 90 Hertz when it comes down to refresh rate on this tablet here, which is something I truly appreciate that Samsung included here, right? So up to 90 Hertz in terms of refresh rate. And I gotta tell you, putting it side by side with the other one, and scrolling up, it's coming pretty close. It's already improving the user experience when you have this tablet here. Watching movies has been great here. It's a pretty portable tablet, so if you're just lounging, you know, in a couch or in bed or whatever, watching a movie here is actually pretty nice. Also, playing games. I've played two games here, so I've tested out two games on here, Asphalt 9 and, of course, PUBG Mobile. And Asphalt 9 played amazingly. Now, when it comes down to PUBG Mobile, I gotta say, when you, get, you have the ability to go up to the highest you know, settings, you can do that, but it's choppy. So when you go to medium, everything plays pretty well. This, of course, leads us into the specs. What you have here in terms of the chipset is an Exynos chipset. I know many people were not happy to hear that the, you know, <laughs> that Samsung would do away with the Snapdragon and this time around go back to the Exynos. So you have an Exynos 1380 here, which is not necessarily the most powerful chipset out there, but so far, so good i think it's performing pretty decently now i've had a tablet for by the time you watch this video i would have had this for two almost two and a half days i meant to drop this video yesterday but anyway so so far when it comes down to just the specs this is what you would be expecting from a mid-range tablet so i have no problem with it so far it's loaded you know out of the box with android 13. it also does come with the standard samsung s pen which by the way is ip68 rated I'm not sure if i mentioned already but the samsung SE tab s9 fe is also ip68 rated and to those of you who are not familiar who may have missed the video that i dropped where i was literally dropping no pun intended there, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9, the Tab S9 Plus, and my Tab S9 Ultra in the pool and leaving it in the pool. I left the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 for up to an hour and took it out, no issue. So this should be able to do the same. And with that being said, if you are interested in me, you know, trying to drown this tablet, let me know in the comment section. If I get enough comments, I might just go ahead and do that test with this and the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 or Tab S9 FE. But anyway, so IP68 rated, so it should be resistant to both dust and water without any issues when it comes down to the user experience of the S Pen. Nothing that I haven't seen before. Essentially the standard S Pen here, you don't have to charge it, which is very nice. So you get all of the amazing Samsung features there without any problem, except of course for the air gesture. And by the way, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 FE and the S9 FE Plus, woo, I gotta get used to that, will be compatible with the Samsung S Pen Pro when that drops. So you, it may be eligible for the air gesture once you go ahead and pick up that. But anyway, so that's as far as the S Pen goes. So when it comes to the user experience, it works. I have no complaint. The lag is not that crazy. Pretty nice. This is a very sophisticated S Pen, a very sophisticated stylus, I should say, and it works pretty well so far with this. I've already covered the camera, but like I mentioned earlier, you know, eight megapixel there is good for scanning documents. And of course the front facing camera here, ultra wide so that, you know, you can really fit in the screen or if you wanna add more, if more people are joining the call, of course, you could just hit that ultra wide so that it could get everyone within the frame. So that's as far as camera goes. When it comes down to battery, what you have here is an 8,000 milliamp battery. So the same size battery we had on Samsung Galaxy Tab S8, which was 8,000 
8,000 also. The Tab S9, I believe was bumped to 8,000 and some change, right? So 8,000 milliamp hour battery. And so far it's been good. That typically means you will be able to finish the day without any issues, even for power user. You should be fine with that size battery in this particular tablet. And something that is amazing about this tablet is also a feature that's available on the flagship ones. This is eligible to charge at up to 45 watts. So it does support fast charge, which is really, and I cannot emphasize this, it's always good to have support for fast charge on tablets because otherwise it would take forever to recharge this guy here. So it's good to have that. Now, as far as accessories go, I went ahead and ordered the, which one did I order? I believe the keyboard cover, I'm not sure, but it didn't get delivered just yet. I believe I'm supposed to get that sometime this weekend. But you know, once I get that in hands, I'll be able to share with you what my first impressions are of that. Now, when it comes down to my first impressions of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 FE, I think this is gonna be a winner this year. Samsung is putting together a lot of pieces so that it can continue to be a major player in the world of tablets. And of course, when it comes down to flexible tablets in general, Samsung offer you know, some of the best user experience, especially when it comes down to productivity. You'll be able to boost your productivity using Samsung tablets, You know, whether we're talking mid-range or their flagship tablets. I personally think that this is gonna be a tablet that I actually recommend out there. I'm gonna do more testing before you know I come up with an actual review. Obviously, this was just, my first impressions of the old new Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 FE here. I will drop my first impressions of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 FE Plus tomorrow, possibly, or the day after, maybe letting you know, more people find this video so that I can drop it. either tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss out on that. So this is gonna be pretty much a go for me. Let me know any questions that you may have down in the comment section. Let me know things that you would like for me to test out on this tablet. I'll make sure that I get to those comments so we can get that back and forth going. Make sure to share this video with anyone who'd be interested. Make sure to like. If you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe. I'm gonna catch you in the comment section. I'm also gonna catch you in the next video. Up until that next video, of course, as always. Stay safe out there.